everyone, and welcome to the Peddling Prince's Podium. I'm your host, John Ardelli. I've been working double shifts at work these past few weeks because I need the extra money and the extra hours are available. But because I've been uh, working double shifts, I haven't had time to edit elaborate shows for the podium. Um, I actually had planned this week to have a show on Sydney Harbour, which is the next in the podium series in uh, the on the uh, attractions in Cape Breton. And the footage is shot. I shot that this past uh, weekend, but I worked double shifts again this week because uh, there were more extra hours available than I thought there were going to be. So I haven't had time to edit any of that footage yet. Um, and so I had either two choices. I could either delay the broadcast of this week's episode or I could push the, uh, the, the um, Harbor episode down to next week. So that's what I'm, I'm going to push it down to next week because next week uh, there's um, Good Friday. I have that entire day off, so I'll have plenty of time to edit that footage. Uh, so uh, that's what you're going to see next week is a show on the history of Sydney Harbour and the uh, Cayley Fiddle on our waterfront. Uh, but, the, but for this week, um, I decided I was going to do something simple that actually I've been meaning to do anyway. So uh, and uh, something I've wanted to share with all of you. You remember that I said that uh, in in an early episode, Life with Marie, that I originally told Marie I loved her by writing her a poem and recording it. I recorded a dramatic reading of the poem. Um, and uh, that's what I'd like to share with you today. It's called Behind the Glass. A little history on me and poetry. Um, I don't write poetry very often. I only write poetry when there's something I feel really passionate about that I'm having trouble communicating. Nowadays, Marie and I communicate really well. If I want to tell her I love her, I just say I love you, or I give her a hug, or um, when she comes home after a tough day at work, I give her a nice foot rub. Um, or, you know, there's a lot of different ways we tell each other we love, e love each other now. So I really haven't had any need to write any further poems about her. But at the time that the poem the, the Behind the Glass was written, she had said to me only a day or two ago that uh, she wanted to tell me something, but she wouldn't tell me what it was until she said she'd talk to me about it in a day or two when she had time. And that scared the heck out of me. I thought, well, what's she going to tell me? Is she going to tell me she doesn't want to talk to me anymore or what, what, what have you? And that's why all those feelings then ultimately came pouring out of me in a poem because I had something I wanted to tell her but couldn't tell her at the time, so I had to get it out somewhere. So the result was the poem Behind the Glass. And it gave me a great opportunity to tell her for the first time that I was in love with her. In fact, in a way, I kind of first fully realized for the first time that I was in love with her while I was writing the poem. So this is a very personal thing for me and I would like to share it with you today. Please feel free to uh, leave any comments or drop me an email or just let me know what you think. So I hope to see you all on the Peddling Princess Podium next week when we have our special uh, our episode on the uh, Sydney Harbour. But for now, I hope you'll enjoy Behind the Glass. There was anger in her eyes, and a sadness so deep, but never would she ever dare to moan or weep. Trapped behind glass in a tower so high, little by little, her heart began to die. In the beginning, the castle lord treated her quite well, but when he began to fall under her spell, he began to fear that some day she might leave. The idea she'd want to stay, he could not believe. So he locked her behind glass, and he kept the key, terrified to allow her to go out and roam free. The lord of the castle said, you're safer with me, than roaming throughout the deep forest free safe in her body, but not in her heart. Being kept behind glass was tearing her apart. He meant her no harm, but he could not see how much the lady needed to be free. I could see her through the glass. Her pain was so clear. I know how much that she 
wanted me near. When she saw me was the only time she would smile. So whenever I could, I stayed with her a while. Even within her prison, she has been my friend. Her words would always help my heart to mend. As time went on, she became a part of my heart. My heart ached as the glass kept us so far apart. You deserve to be free, I plead to her every day. You're so unhappy. Why would you want to stay? At least I'm safe here, she says with a sigh. It's been too long. Love has long passed me by. Don't give up hope, I plead on my knees. Just keep your heart open, I beg of you, please. No, she says sadly, I've been in this tower too long. And to leave the kind Lord who cares for me is wrong. But there's no love left, you're miserable and sad. What's the point of being safe when you only feel so bad? And the Lord, you know he should be set free too. Maybe given the chance, he might find someone new. I can't be with you, she says with tears in her eyes. I have with his life far too many ties. I cannot deny I want to be with you. But I don't believe that's something I am supposed to do. Then I'll be your friend, I said. I won't leave your side. And if you ever need my help, your heart I'll help to guide. No matter what you decide, what you say or what you do, I'll be here if you need me. This I promise to you. In your arms is where I so long to be, but I will accept God's will if that's not meant to be. I ask of God only he give you strength to break free. It matters not in the end what happens to me. There is anger in her eyes, and a sadness so deep, but never does she dare to moan or weep. Little by little, her heart is beginning to die, but in our moments together, I help her heart fly, because I love her, that's why.